It has been a decade since she died. To the exact day. We left this place and said we'd never come back. It made sure that she couldn't come back. So why am I still here? I know in my mind that I should be with her family. Helping them through this difficult date. And trying to ignore the pain in my own heart as they talk about how they all thought that we would get married. Yet, I'm not. I'm stood outside this godforsaken place. I crumbled the piece of paper that I had and shoved it back into my pocket as I moved to open the door. Sammy, come play hide and seek, was all that the note read. I found it next to my bedside in Sandra's elegant handwriting. Then, an hour later, I got the call about what happened to her. It took some effort to force open the door. The metal hinges had only rusted more over the last ten years, and tales of this old abandoned institution started to fade into the town's history. Personally, I haven't heard anyone talk about coming here, not since Sandra and I came. So, why am I here again? Although there is nothing to guarantee that some of the other kids haven't gone exploring in the dead of night without telling their parents... For their sake, I hope they haven't. An overwhelming smell of must and damp washes over me as soon as I put my foot in the building. It brings back more memories than I care to think about. Ones that I'd locked away deep down in my mind. Scuttling noises, flashing lights, the metallic taste of blood, and that figure walking towards me. I shook my head trying to clear my mind of these thoughts. Even though coming back here was obviously going to make me remember, whether I wanted to or not, something at the back of my mind told me that I'd eventually be coming back here. But I couldn't. Not when I first got the note. The memories of Sandra were still fresh in my mind. In all honesty, I'd forgotten about the note. Whether it was simply because of the stress or because I purposely ignored it until it left my mind, I was unsure. Only after clearing my room to move out did I come across it again. And if there's a chance that I could find out what happened to her, then I have to take it. I pulled out my flashlight, immediately casting it in front of me. Nothing. Scanning across the floor, the aging of the building became more evident. Scuff marks and cracks in the tile ground. Rats feeding off of the dead insects, running into their little hiding place as soon as the light hit. But thankfully, the map was still legible. Getting lost was not one of the plans which I had for tonight. But one thing was different. A red S was drawn over one of the rooms. The medical bay. Maybe Sandra left it there on that first night as a meeting point. But no, the ink was fresh. It couldn't have been fresh, there's no way. Sandra couldn't have been here for the last ten years. I'm only trying to find out what happened. Even if she was here, she couldn't have written that knowing I was coming. That lingering feeling of dread became more powerful with every step that I took. Tap. 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 The solid sole of my shoe hitting the stone was rhythmic and echoing, like nothing else in here even existed. My feet kept on moving. I didn't even think about where I was going. It was all ingrained into my movements, my life. Keeping the flashlight pointed ahead of me, I didn't stop until I hit something light with my foot. It was another note. Finally come to play? This isn't funny, I called out. A girl died. Stop your senseless pranks. There was nothing in response. Only what sounded like faint giggling echoing through the pipes of the building. I crumbled up the note and put it with the other one in my pocket. Trying the whole time to convince myself that they weren't the same handwriting. But they were. I followed my way around the twisting, winding corridors until I was stood in front of the door to the medical bay. 
and there was a soft humming resonating from the room. How had I not heard that before? It was clear as day and captivating. I was opening the door before I had even consciously decided to do so. I wanted to get near to the sound. It was comforting. It felt safe. Compared to everywhere else, the medical bay had changed the least. In fact, it hadn't changed at all. Thick layers of dust covered everywhere else in this place, but not here. It was almost as though I'd stepped back in time to ten years ago. The small hand marks and fingerprints still visible against the grime, exactly where we touched. Not a single speck of dust was on those places. The other thing that reminded me of ten years ago was Sandra. It sat in the center of the room, clutching onto one of her childhood dolls and humming the soft tune that I'd heard outside the door. It was definitely her. But she'd aged, much in the same way that I had. Her hair was longer, and she was taller, though just as skinny as I remembered. You found me, she clapped and giggled. Yes, I did. I barely believed the words that I was saying. But now we have to go back. People think you're dead. We need to get you home and safe. I am dead, she raised an eyebrow looking just as confused as I felt. They buried my body, didn't they? There must have been a mistake. I grabbed her hand, flesh, and bone. You're real and you're coming home. No, no, no. Strands of her hair hit my face as she shook her head maniacally. That's not how the game works. It's your turn to hide now. He'll find you eventually, but he likes the game. Who likes the game? Is he the one that took you? She didn't look in pain or in ill health, but her eyes were bloodshot. It was almost as though I could see the veins pulsing through them. He didn't take me. He adopted me. She smiled fondly. Of course, he can only adopt those that have passed over, which is why he has to find you. Hence, we play hide-and-seek. No, we're not playing hide-and-seek. We're going home now. I couldn't say anything more. Thuds echoed throughout the building. Well, the game has started she laughed, her mouth was open wide, and I could see the bloodied state of her teeth. Before I'd gathered my wits to respond to her, she'd scuttled off, crawling up the wall as though she were some kind of insect. Her bones cracked with every movement. The thudding drew closer and closer. My legs shook as I forced myself to get on my feet. I was wobbly, but I was moving, and I was leaving. The rusty steel walls echoed the thudding, and it sounded like it was coming from everywhere, and that was the same sound I heard the last time. It came flooding back to me. That was what I had just heard seconds before Sandra's blood-curdling scream. Whatever the truth, whether she lived here or we buried her ten years ago, what she saw changed her. There is no doubt about that. Making my way back to the entrance seemed harder. My mind was racing, and I kept tripping over every tiny thing on the dirty old floor. I wasn't able to go on autopilot like I was before. I was thinking way too much. The thudding kept coming closer, yet it sounded around me, and I couldn't tell which way it was going. I just needed to get back. I didn't walk that far to get to the medical bay. Surely the door was nearby. I was tumbling to the floor before I even knew what had happened. My foot had caught onto a chipped tile, and I had nothing to stable myself on. Thankfully, I had the presence of mind to thrust out my hands to prevent me from hitting the ground face first. The thudding stopped. My chest was tight and my mouth was dry. I knew I had to look up. 
Maybe it simply stopped following me, or maybe it was standing behind me, ready and waiting. I began shuffling along the floor before I'd even fully turned back. There wasn't time to focus on the scuffs and scratches that now covered my hands. Not after what was standing behind me. This demon, or monster, or whatever it was, stood hunched over in the corridor. At its full height, it must have been at least ten feet tall. Its legs were covered in fur. White fur, but matted and caked in blood. Hooves replaced feet which is what surely made the thudding sound echo as it did. Skin covered its upper body, although it didn't seem quite like human skin. There was a sickly green tinge to it, and it hung down from the being's limbs, saggy as though it were stretched and never pulled back into its original shape. Two large antlers sprung from its head. They were jagged and looked deathly sharp. Spiders had been spinning their webs along these antlers, and masses of dead insects sat trapped in the woven silk. Its face... well, I struggle to find words to describe it, other than the most horrifying thing I had ever seen. It had no eyes, just empty sockets in which its thick skin hung down. There was no nose either, and its mouth... Well, it didn't appear to have one at first. That is, not until it smiled. The saggy skin pulled back to reveal a series of rotten and pointed teeth, filled with blood and insects, just like the rest of it. But as it smiled and bared its teeth, its mouth didn't separate. Stringy bits of rotten flesh held the two pieces of skin together arguably more horrifying than if I had seen its teeth in full. Morbid curiosity is something I think most people have, and I've never felt it stronger than at that moment. The innate fear rushed through my body, and as soon as I realized that what I was seeing was actually real, I scrambled to my feet. But there was a part of me that wanted to stay. So, intrigued by this being before me. Well, why was he here? I longed to ask him. Sandra said that he adopted her. Maybe he's just looking for a family. The sound of a squeaking rap brought me out of whatever trance I was in because of this creature. Just like me, the rodent ran off to try and find some place to hide. I didn't look back. I couldn't. If I did, I was scared that I'd never leave and maybe I'd end up like Sandra. I still don't know if that was the real Sandra back there. Maybe it was all an illusion created by this creature to keep me here. I tried not to think too much. I just ran. I ran until the sharp cold of the night air hit my skin. Taking only a moment to catch my breath, I started running again. Whether it was bound to this place or not, I wanted to be far away from it all. No, I needed to be far away from it all. As you can imagine, sleep didn't come for me that night. It wasn't in any way surprising, but it definitely didn't help the state that I was in. I scheduled an emergency appointment with my therapist that day. He'd been helping me since Sandra's death and he's the only person I'd ever told about that night. Maybe he'd have some logical explanation as to what had happened back there. God, I had hoped that he would have a logical explanation. He did, in a way. As he sat there listening to me speak of what I saw, occasionally humming as if to say he understood what I was saying, I'd never felt more insane. Listen, don't be so hard on yourself, he said. That place caused you some severe trauma. You lost one of your best friends because of that place. So it's not totally unreasonable that your mind came up with these traumatic images because you haven't been able to process what had happened. 
He was scribbling something on a little notepad as he spoke. Here. A green slip of prescription paper was placed in my hand. This should help you sleep and calm your night terrors. I think we should start having more frequent appointments too. I nodded in agreement and left. The pills weren't hard to swallow, sugar-coated and only very small. But the reality, well, that was much harder to swallow. Sure, I could have been hallucinating at all, but that doesn't explain the note. Either of them. Both of which are very real, still crumpled in my jeans pocket. Either way, the pills didn't give me too long to think. I was tired, so very tired, and my body sunk deep into the blankets and pillows that covered my bed, eyes fluttering shut within seconds. I didn't wake again until hours later when I heard it. Thud. Thud. The noise woke me, and it took all my strength to open my eyes. I had to see what it was, even though I was terrified. And he was there, leaning over me. A wide smile spread across his face, and spit and blood dripping down onto me. But I didn't mind. And that's the scariest thing. This giant lumbering monster could make me feel safe and comfortable. I closed my eyes for the last time that night. You see, I don't need to know that I'm dead. There's not much to see in this old abandoned building, anyway. <laughs>